Well, welcome to chapel. We are so excited that you've taken time to join us as we worship the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the reason for everything and holds all things together. And so now we have a chance, this chapel, I'm so excited to go inside behind the scenes pulling back the veil where you get to see some professors, some of your professors, some of your soon-to-be professors, and see their heart for Jesus Christ and what God is doing in their lives that's affecting this campus and affecting all of us. So at Chapel, the whole vision, this is for us, where our university family comes together and we connect with the thoughts and heart of Jesus Christ so that we can become more like him and proclaim him. With that, let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer as we ask him to bless this time. Father, in the name of Jesus, this whole chapel is centered on the theme of prayer and the power of prayer. James 5 promises us that the prayers of a righteous man availeth much. And here we have some professors that are absolutely on fire, born again, living in the righteousness of Jesus. And Lord, you are using them mightily. So we celebrate this. May you be glorified. May we who encounter you today become more like Jesus. Transform our minds. Renew and change our hearts and create in us a pure heart for your glory. We love you and we praise you and thank you. And all God's people said what? That's right, A to the men and women.
So we are just so excited. Let me introduce some of my new best friends. Some of my new best friends. And so we have to my left, Professor Raines, and Professor Raines teaches in the nursing program. She is amazing. I want y'all to know, amazing. Take her classes, yes, take her classes. And I also want to brag for a moment. Her husband, I cannot wait to get to know, well, because he actually loves to just lift weights. I mean, it's, a, it's amazing. He is actually coaching. He's doing tactical work. It's amazing what God is doing through him. So I'm excited about that, getting to know them. And then Dr. Please, she works within and teaches within the, the College of Education. She is phenomenal. Uh, I, I know her husband, and I've got to see some of her uh, children online. Just great, great family. We're excited that you're joining. So I want to start with y'all, and I'm going to start with you first, uh, uh, Professor Raines, and just kind of ask you, Tell us a little bit about that moment where Jesus stepped into your life and you're never the same. We call that a salvation experience for everybody that's worshiping with us today. But tell us a little bit about when you surrendered your life to Jesus. Sure, sure. Thank you, John. So I would have to be entirely honest and say that faith has always been tremendously important to me. Growing up, becoming an adult, entering into marriage, into a profession, and I can clearly delineate some moments in time where the Lord came down and either whacked me upside the head and said, stop, you're trying to plan everything and surrender to me. And then some more gentler nudges along the way. Um, throughout adulthood, there has never been a time that was not enhanced through prayer, ever, nothing be that as a wife, as a mother, as a nurse, as an instructor, trying to discern your career path, everything in my adult life has been enlightened and invigorated by prayer. And it's just, it's been a blessing and I hope to share it with more. Amen and amen. And so what we're excited, that's our whole theme is prayer. We want you to know what God is doing through prayer. So uh, Doctor, please tell us a little bit of, about your journey and your walk with Jesus and how the Lord has impacted your life through salvation. Well, like Professor Raines, the Lord has always been a part of my life. And I actually have a picture of me when I was in seventh grade. So that's me in my bedroom. And it was in seventh grade when I was at Camp Wesley Woods in Iowa we would go every summer, and this particular summer, this is the campfire that we were around when I gave my life to Christ. It was every, on the Friday, the week of, that, of the camp, on Friday would be a very special campfire, and everyone knew that that was a really special campfire. And so um, I still remember my camp counselors from that week, and it was just an amazing experience. Um, and then I went on to be a camp counselor myself, and then every, every group that I had, there was more and more people that would hit children who would give their, their life over. Um, we were just witnesses to the faith. So, and I even have, I don't even know if that's backwards or not, but I even have, um, when I was getting these pictures out, so in seventh grade, you kind of think you're all grown up. No, I found my doll. This was my strawberry shortcake from seventh grade. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I love strawberry shortcake, so it just made me think about this big picture of food, you know what I mean? It doesn't have the smell anymore. <laughs> Well, what's amazing, you get to see, this is behind the veil, you get to see and enter into the lives of people that are giving their lives away for Jesus and loving you well. And I want to read a little bit of the scripture. I quoted it in my prayer, but in James chapter 5, it talks about the power of prayer. The Holy Spirit led me there and it says, and the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. And so because we who are born again, those who have surrendered their lives to Jesus Christ, realize that we were wrecked because of our sins and we're no match for our sins and we needed righteousness and right standing with God. And that could only come through the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on the cross for our sins. And so we have surrendered our life to him. For those who've done that, now we get the righteousness of God. We can enter into the presence of God through prayer in powerful ways. And it's amazing. In fact, anybody 
can call upon in the name of the Lord. You don't have to be born again. You can call upon the name of the Lord for salvation at any moment. He will hear that cry. He will hear that prayer. We want to make sure you have an opportunity to do that. And so with the idea of prayer, could you give us a personal moment? I'm going to start with you, Professor Rains. Could you give us a personal moment, maybe where prayer impacted your life uh, at one point, at one journey in your life where prayer really became real to you and you saw God move? Absolutely. Let's peel back that veil. Let's take it very personally. Life is not always a smooth sail. I think we can all attest to that. And there was a time several years ago where we as a married couple were in a very broken place. It was a very, very confusing time, a very frightening time. And I found myself on my knees in prayer and completely surrendered because I am very much that type A person that needs to plan everything, that needs to know what the next step is going to be. And so for me to truly surrender in that moment and surrender our life's path, our life's future, it was amazing. It was as though in that moment of surrender, the Lord spoke to us and said, I've got this covered, stop your fretting, put it in my hands. And I got to tell you, it was such an amazing moment of conversion between the two of us, for my husband and I, that truly from that point on, our marriage has never been the same. It's beautiful. We're married. We are raising four kids together. It's a wonderful life. I couldn't ask for more. But truly, without the Lord, it would not be what it is. And what a powerful statement, Professor Rains, because, you know, this is the beginning of the semester and some of you are out there as, as students and you might be going, why am I here? What's really going on? I, I'm in some of these classes. I'm just not sure if I should be here. If I, listen, God has a plan. And it is through prayer we submit to that plan. I give you an example where Jesus Christ submitted to the plan of God as he struggled there the night that he was going to be betrayed, the night that he was going to be on trial and beaten and the next day be crucified for us because of his great love for us. Through prayer, you saw that struggle. It's through prayer we see the power of obedience. And God has a plan. And through prayer, it really strengthens us. Uh, Dr. Please, tell us a little bit about maybe one moment in your life uh, with, I guess, strawberry shortcake there next to you. I'm just teasing. And about how God used prayer in your life. Well, the, the most recent, there have been so many times where I um, literally felt connected to God and sometimes God speaking to me. And the most recent time was just this last semester in the spring. And I had done my morning prayer, um, but I do my, my Old Testament reading and then my New Testament reading. And then the Old Testament, it was in the Psalms about not boasting from your lips that all ideas come from me and my and is and is mine and then in the new testament it's where the disciples the ground shook as they were praying can you imagine like you're praying and the ground started shaking and the holy spirit came to them and then i did my prayer and literally when i was doing my prayer everything stopped into this like slow motion and then as fast as you can imagine this vision was just out in front of me and it was unreal it was an idea that started with that very quickly from why don't we have a faculty guide from a student's perspective of what the year looks like and we can pray for students about the same thing like we're all united as faculty and, and why if the faculty why not staff and why not the parents and the whole of csu community is praying for our students around common themes every single week now, there was a whole lot more that came in that moment of prayer, but that was just um, the tip of the iceberg that has started a huge movement on our campus. And I am so excited. And so when I got to know uh, the vision that God gave uh, Dr. Police and Professor Rains, uh, immediately the whole Office of Spiritual Life, that's who we are, we, got, we wanted to be a part of that. We wanted to join in what God is doing. I want you to know, here are two powerful professors in the Lord. Whoa, I almost started crying. Sorry. Um, that God is using in your life. They have dedicated. I just got it on the, on the back end of this. They, they, they have dedicated their lives this summer into putting this cover the campus initiative in prayer for you. 
and for the faculty and for the staff that unites us because we know when there's much prayer, there's much power, there's little prayer, little power. So I'm going to go on into this. So, so Professor Raines, I've been starting with you and then I'll end with Dr. Please, uh, just tell us really what is this Cover the Campus Prayer about and what does it mean to you? And you have thrown your whole summer into this because you see the power of what God is doing. I have, you're right, you're right. So as I mentioned earlier, the power of prayer is overwhelming. It's completely overwhelming. There's, if you already believe that, you're on board. If you don't believe it, we'll work on making you a believer. I have an article, a research article, that I make my senior nursing students read that actually correlates better patient outcomes with the spirituality of their nurses. It's real, y'all. It is real. Prayer is a powerful thing. The positive light that it brings into your heart is a real thing. And so Dr. Cleese and I wanted to share that with the campus. Sometimes we might find it difficult to find a, a specific intention for our prayer on any given day. Some of us find it very easy to sit and meditate quietly and just be in the presence of God. Some of us find that very difficult. And so we think that it might be helpful to have some sort of very specific prayer intentions to allow students, faculty, and parents to be intentional in their prayers over our students. So to that end, we've come up with a, a prayer walk through the academic year, if you will. And I'll let Dr. Please take it from there. Great. So. Uh, we have put together a weekly devotional prayer. It's all written together in a guide. And this, these devotionals are written by your professors. So every, we've got the PA program, we've got um, Christian studies, we've got college of education, we've got um, just a, a whole variety of, of professors across campus who have devoted, have written devotionals and prayers that we can all follow. And this, the theme is the same for all the groups. So the faculty and staff are praying for the same thing that the, that the parents are praying for, that the students are praying for. And it's all geared towards you for the students. What's amazing is they put so much work into this. You who are on campus and you who are commuting and those type of things, you have seen these little prayer guide devotionals. In fact, there are places where you can get those online and, and you can begin to download those and, and look through those and see what people have written in these devotionals and prayer. Could you tell us a little bit about some of those locations? I'll start with you, uh, Professor Reyes. Absolutely. So during your initial move-in week, whatever that meant for you, if you're on campus or not, hopefully you had the opportunity to stop by a table and pick up these little bookmarks. These have been put together as an easy way for you to access this prayer guide. These are just little teasers. This is not the entire bulk of our work, I assure you. But what it has down here is some QR codes. There's one for parents and there's one for students with these QR codes that you can just click that camera on your phone and take you directly to the full prayer guide. Excellent. And what are some other steps if, if they're out there right now and they're worshiping with us and they say, you know, I, I want to download this or I want to see this online. Uh, Dr. Please, what's the next step they could do for that? Yes. So every week you can go to, or any day of the week, you can go to your Buck app. And if you open up the Buck app and go to cover the campus, you'll see the devotional right there. So um, you, let's say it's a Wednesday um, and you're clicking around on your app and you go, oh yeah, the cover the campus is there. It doesn't matter if it's a Wednesday, Wednesday or Saturday or Sunday. It's the same devotional all week. And we'll start with a new one every Sunday and then end on Saturday. Um, and also from there, you can find the link to click to, the same as the QR code, it'll take you to the website um, where you'll find events, um, you'll find the other prayer guides, everything that you need to, to focus around prayer will be there. Um, let's say you have a prayer request yourself. You've got an incredible joy and a blessing that's come into your life, or you've got some concerns that you'd like someone praying for you. There are, there are places that you can, that on that website, if you click on the, the link from the Buck app and go or use the QR code, you'll be taken to the place on um, Cover the Campus website where you can fill in a form and your prayer request will go to people who are going to pray, pray for you and your needs. That might be something you want to do right now as you look at the Buck Nation app 
and you go to that and you click on that link for prayer requests, or you could go to the website and you could go to the viewfinder, type in prayer requests. It's going to take you right to that landing page. That the, the, your prayer requests will then go to a group of people, us, and we will begin to lift up your request to the Lord. We know right now everything's new. Some of you are excited. Some of you are going, what is going on? This all this new stuff. We want you to know that God has already gone before you. And to prove that, he has placed on my sister's heart, he has placed you your families on there. Your families have been prayed for. You have been prayed for before you ever got here. And we're continually lifting you up. I want to read the scripture. It says, Elijah was a human being, even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. One of the greatest prophets that we know we are, we are being compared to him and because we have the same ability to pray just like him because we have Jesus interceding for us. We have the Holy Spirit interceding for us. And I want to land with this last question. If there is a student out there, and I'll start with you, Professor Reigns, to go right to you, Dr. Please. There's a student out there, or, and maybe they have, they really don't even know what to do or how to even say this prayer request. What would you be able to tell them to know that Jesus loves them and that they are being prayed for? What could you say to speak in their, to their lives to let them know that they are loved? I would say that God has put you here already for a reason. Even if you feel like you've just stumbled into this place at this time, there's a reason behind it. You are so loved. You are so prayed for. Look at all of these faculty members and all of these staff members that are already holding you up in prayer. You haven't even asked for it yet. Imagine how much more with just a request. Wow, you make me want to go ahead and get my tithe money. You got me all excited. <laughs> she got I me. Mean, she just laid it out there. That's I love. Dr. Please, we, we're getting ready to land this. What would you like to say about to those students out there to let them know how much they are loved and valued by our Lord Jesus Christ? and what God did when he gave you that vision for prayer. So I'll tell you, when, when, I, when I had that moment with God, and it, 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 it sent chills down my spine, and I reached out to some people. I reached out to Dr. Costin. I reached out to Michael, Dr. Michael Bryant. I reached out to some different people, and I shared right away while it was fresh and raw. And, and then it sat for a little bit, and I thought, I pondered and I thought and I just let it sit and on that Wednesday I was in the back of chapel because I always stand in the back of chapel because I got to be in the room and I'm looking out over all you guys all the students all sitting there and they're, you guys are praising God and you're singing and I'm like they have no idea what's coming like I could see the prayers coming down over you all these prayers coming down and I just got and I was like, they're covered. They're covered in prayer. Cover the campus. We're going to cover the campus. It doesn't matter if you're a commuter student. It doesn't matter if you are a, a parent of children of your own and you're back at school yourself. It doesn't matter if you're on campus, off campus. It doesn't matter who you are, where you are, what group you're with. You are being prayed for. And so if you would open your heart to those prayers, even if you don't know what to say back, it doesn't matter because God's going to be right there when you open your heart. He will listen to you because he wants to have a personal relationship with you. Couldn't say it any better. I mean, they, I'm almost speechless because these are my sisters in Christ. They are way smarter than me. They, they, they know so much more, but yet the bond of Jesus Christ draws us so close. Professor Reigns, I cannot thank you enough for your willingness to do this. I cannot, and I, I just want to just speak over you as, as, as somebody joining with you in this. I praise God for you and your family. Uh, uh, Dr. Police, I praise God for you and your family. I thank the Lord for you. I thank you that God has given you such vision. And I want you to know 
that you are still being prayed for. And if you're sitting out there today and you have a prayer request right now, it is not unholy to go on your phone or get on your computer, however you're watching this, and, and go ahead and say, I, I need something. Would you pray for me? Maybe you have a question about what does it take to be saved? And what, is it, what does that mean that, 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 that I have sinned against the holy God and there's this great impasse that I can't get to because of my sins, but yet God in his rich love and mercy sent the perfect sacrifice for us, Jesus Christ, so that we could have a relationship with God. First Peter 3, 18, that's the key. The key of salvation is we get to have a relationship with him now. And you see evidence of that in my two sisters in Christ. This is CSU. This is your pathway to purpose. This is the vision that, do, that God gave Dr. Costin that's now being played out all over campus, and it is through prayer. And I want you to know that even when you feel like you have nothing left to pray, maybe you're at that type of moment, there are people that will stand in the gap and pray for you. As a pastor who has seen people on their deathbed, and seeing how they were begging and longing for people of prayer. That's the people that are gonna mean something to you in this world, are the people that pray. I cannot say, Professor Reigns, thank you, thank you, thank you for your obedience to the Lord. Thank you for being at CSU. Thank you for your heart. Dr. Place, what can we say? You, you, God gave you this vision and look how it's just coming into fruition. And I cannot wait to hear the responses from this. So I'm gonna ask you, Dr. Police, if you don't mind, would you close us in this great chapel? Would you close us in prayer? Dear Lord, you will hear our hearts, every beat of our heart. You hear our breath, every breath we take, every thought we have, every word we say, because you're present with us. Lord, I ask you to cover this campus, bless our students. Each one of them has so much joy. Each one of them has sorrow, yeah. concerns, excitement. Lord, you've given us all of these emotions, and sometimes we don't know where to put it. Let us bring it back to you. Yes. Let us share our life with you, Lord. I pray that each one of the students listening today is able to open their hearts and listen to you and hear your call and begin a relationship with you. And if they have a relationship with you, God, let it go deeper because there's so, such a wonderful, immense place for us in your heart that we can't even imagine. Lord, thank you for all the blessings you have given our campus and our community. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. Amen and amen. If God has spoken to you, if you would like uh, to, to issue a prayer request, any of needs, anything that we can do for you, go ahead and go to the website, type in prayer requests, go ahead and put that in. Go to your Buck Nation app. Go ahead and put that in. Get in those devotionals. Read what God is doing on Cover the Campus. And on behalf of uh, all of Charleston Southern University, thank y'all, my sisters. Thank you for being such leaders for Jesus Christ. We love you, and we will be lifting you up in prayer, and we'll be lifting you up in prayer. May God bless you.